so uh, yeah so today we will have a brief discussion on uh, gen servers and uh, what i plan to do and like going through the uh, documentation while preparing for this i found it's a pretty big topic lots of things to cover so we will cover most of the important things and maybe we can have another session to uh, for the remaining part so uh, and uh, while i go through if you have any questions or uh, if you feel something i am going wrong please uh, feel free to stop me and uh, we can discuss okay so let us begin uh, so we have these gen ser something called gen server in elixir gen servers are nothing but a sort of a behavior in elixir so they are nothing but normal processes uh, in elixir uh, the same thing is uh, like they are uh, just a process in elixir right so we launch process using spawn uh, gen server is no different but the only thing is that it has certain callbacks and certain behaviors uh, which makes it a bit special and uh, so uh, one of the questions that you might have is uh, when to use a gen server or when to use task, when to use agent, when to use spawn and all these different types of things that Elixir offers. So one easy way is uh, which you can think of uh, is like uh, most of the time if you want to do something uh, asynchronously like in real life example would be send an email uh, or do something which uh, doesn't uh, using which uh, like due to which you don't want to block the current process so uh, most of the time task is enough it has all the methods and it's a good wrapper over the primitives uh, like primitive processes so you can just use task a module that elixir offers and use one of the functions that it has okay uh, if you have if you want to store some state and uh, some kind of a mutable state uh, then uh, agent is helpful uh, we we can discuss it in detail maybe later and uh, apart from that we have spawn spawn is a more primitive way to uh, launch a process and mostly we don't use it in uh, actual code uh, it's good to play around with it in iex and all but uh, in actual real life code we should avoid uh, using spawn and use some uh, high level wrapper like task or agent okay uh, so where does gen server fit in so basically if you have a process where you want to maintain state and you want to exchange messages with the process so you want to send some messages to the process and uh, you want the process to communicate back to you so gen server offers a good uh, sort of a blueprint where it offers you certain callbacks which you just need to define and then uh, the rest of the thing is pretty easy uh, so uh, Okay, so uh, before going forward, one important thing is when you should not use a gen server. So you should not use a gen server when you just want to organize your code. For that, you just have you should just use modules and uh, functions that uh, that Elixir already has. Uh, you should only use gen server when you want to do something like uh, you want to maintain some state or you want to say do something asynchronously. Uh, only then you should uh, like use a gen server like the documentation says that uh, use processes to only model runtime properties mutable state concurrency okay and uh, we should never use gen server for code organization for code organization you should just use modules and functions okay so with that let us see a small uh, example of uh, gen server and we will understand all the different callbacks uh, using this example and uh, directly executing the code Okay, so before going through it, uh, before executing it, I'll just briefly go over it and we'll go over it in more detail uh, once once I execute more code. Okay, so this is a gen server uh, module name is stack. Uh, we have to use uh, add the use gen server uh, uh, command so that it uh, this module is uh, using the gen server behavior. Okay, and uh, then you can uh, uh, define some public functions which you can use to do uh, different things in the gen server okay so we'll come to this okay the first important thing is the init callback that the gen server has okay so this is one of the uh, callbacks that uh, you can you have to define when you are creating a gen server basically it gets invoked when the gen server starts okay and it gives you an opportunity to set the initial state of the gen server so uh, as i said the gen server has a state and uh, the default value like the initial value of the state that you want uh, you have to set it from this init callback. So how do you set it? You basically uh, in this init callback can re uh, receive an argument. Okay. And uh, when you're returning from this init callback, you return uh, something like, okay, 
and what is the default value of the state okay so in this case say the default value is whatever argument i received i am just uh, sending it as the default value okay okay so uh, let's take this opportunity to see another uh, callback which is uh, less used but uh, it's there so there's a callback called handle continue okay and uh, let me first uh, explain the use case uh, where this is useful so say you are starting up a gen server and uh, the initial state of the gen server uh, would take some time to uh, you know, like it would take some time to set the initial state of the gen server. So say uh, you have to make an API call you or you have to do some complex uh, something which will which would take time, right? So uh, in that case, what will happen if you want to do all that thing in this init callback, then it will block the gen server uh, from starting, right? So it won't start until you return from this init callback. Okay. So in that case, what you can do is you can say that uh, launch my gen server with some default state and later in the handle continue block, I will do all the complex uh, whatever logic I have to fetch the fetch and update the state further. For instance, say um, to do something like this, I can just return OK followed by some default state and then I can instead of uh, instead of just returning this I can return this sort of a tuple where I say continue followed by some atom okay and then uh, when this happens once the gen server is initialized it will automatically call the handle continue callback this handle continue callback will pattern match on the second uh, atom that I have specified in the tuple Okay, so say you can have multiple handle continue callbacks, right? So which one to invoke? So that is defined by this uh, pattern that you're giving over here, matching on this pattern. So it will uh, match on this pattern. It will call this and inside over here, you can do all the uh, stuff you want to uh, do for setting the state. So say inside over here, you make an API call. It took say, say it can take a few seconds and finally, you get the state and you can update the state over here. So from this handle continue, you return the new updated state. So that's what handle continue does. We don't use it much, but it's good to know that it exists. Okay. So after that, uh, some of the more uh, frequently used callbacks uh, appear. So handle call and handle cast. Uh, so the basic thing is uh, that uh, if you are passing some message to the gen server, then you can do so using handle call. Okay, so say uh, this is the stack server. So it's basically an implementation of a stack. Okay, so a stack has two types of uh, major operations that is push and pop. So we are sh simulating that. So uh, this handle call takes a atom called pop. Okay, so what it takes is, is it takes an atom called pop, then it takes a from argument, which is basically a tuple. It's a two element tuple and it contains the caller's PID and a tag which uh, identifies the call. So say, for instance, it might contain something like the caller's PID followed by a tag. Okay, so over here, we are not interested. So I've just uh, uh, ignored this call. So yeah, this is basically that. And then uh, you will get the state. Okay, so over here, the state is an array, uh, like a list. Okay, and we are directly pattern matching over the list to find uh, the first uh, the first element in the stack and uh, then we are replying back to the caller and sending it the first element and the rest of the element we are putting it in the uh, uh, we are continuing with the rest of the elements in the state right so say the stack contains one two three so you will pattern match out one uh, you will reply with one and two and three will uh, is what the stack will contain in the state okay so one of the important thing over here uh, to understand is that when you are uh, when you are doing a uh, handle call in um, gen server so it basically gets invoked when you do something like this you do gen server dot call you pass it the gen server pid and then you pass it the message uh, which you want okay so we are here it's pop okay and it's matching with this pop okay and this handle call will actually block the caller okay so it will block the caller until this handle call thing returns from over here so for example say if i do something like timer dot sleep over here and i sleep for say two seconds so the caller will be blocked over here uh, and this call will block for two seconds until the gen server replies back Okay, so this is one important difference between call and uh, cast, which we'll uh, look at uh, after this. Okay, so uh, with call, you can re send a reply back to the caller. Okay, so you can uh, pass this tuple, uh, this sort of tuple. The first element is reply, 
and the second element is what you want to reply with so over here we are replying with whatever we popped from the stack and the third element is the new updated state of the gen server okay so yeah this is the handle call and uh, this is uh, this is another handle call which gets called if the stack is empty so if the stack is empty the list is empty there's nothing to pop so in that case we are uh, raising an exception stack underflow okay and uh, then we have handle cast handle cast uh, is used when you want to pass some message to the gen server but you're not expecting a reply back from the server okay so uh, and handle cast is asynchronous so you call handle cast using something like this gen server dot cast pass it the gen server pid and the message you want to cast okay in this case we are we want to push an element into the stack the first uh, we are passing a tuple the first first thing is an atom push and the second thing is uh, like the element which, uh, that we want to push so it's matching against this cast uh, callback and it's pushing uh, this thing into the state okay uh, so one of the thing is that this gen server cast might take some time to do its operation okay so if i do say timer dot sleep some something over here uh, sleep say two second okay the caller over here will not wait for two second okay it just sends the message to the gen server and the gen server may uh, proce uh, process the message whenever it uh, has time so say the gen server is busy processing in processing other messages uh, in its mailbox okay so that in that case this message push thing it will queue up in the gen server mailbox and whenever uh, the gen server gets time it will process this message okay the caller will not wait for the gen server uh, to for any reply because with cast we don't uh, we cannot send a reply back okay so this is an important difference between call and cast with call we send a reply back with ca which with cast we uh, we don't have to send a reply and with call the caller will block until the gen server returns uh, back a reply with cast the uh, caller just sends a message to the gen server and it does not wait for any replies from the gen server so uh, call and cast are the one of the most uh, uh, widely used ones uh, most commonly used okay uh, we'll look at handle info and terminate later uh, let's just uh, look into some code and execute it and see okay one thing before executing is you will see that instead of directly calling gen server call gen server cast i have wrapped it into this methods okay this is one of the things that the um let the elixir uh, documentation and the community uh, sort of recommends to not uh, communicate directly with the gen server but have some public api some wrapper functions using which you can uh, which indirectly call the gen server only so when when talking with the stack server you will not uh, directly call these um, gen server methods instead you can call these uh, handy push pop these methods and that will do the internal thing of communicating with the gen server so I will copy this code and I'll paste this in IEX. Okay, let me refresh this. Okay, so we have a uh, gen server ready. And to start a gen server, you basically call gen server.start. Okay, uh, gen server.start link. Okay, it will uh, start the gen server process, which is linked to your caller process. Okay, and uh, you pass it the module, the gen server module. In this case, it's stack and you pass it the uh, initial state of the gen server so in this case we have a stack and the initial state will contain this single element hello okay and it will return the pid of the gen server okay uh, the process gen server process which has started okay so here i have started the gen server process and let's see what happens so when when you start this process the first thing which gets printed over here you see in handle continue so this is expected as we discussed so uh, when we started it the init callback fired okay over here it got this uh, hello as the initial state over here right and then it uh, it returned continue uh, okay and when it returned this continue then our handle continue block executed and over here i have done a io dot puts in handle continue which got printed over here okay and uh, then finally uh, uh, i also got the return value from the start link which is the okay and the gen server pid okay but uh, okay till now i think it's clear uh, okay uh, before doing any other operations on the gen server let her, let us quickly uh, do one more very interesting thing so uh, when you are debugging or doing something with gen servers uh, you often uh, it might not be working properly as you expected at certain times and it's uh, instead of using these io dot ports and trying to debug it one of the things you can do is uh, introspect the gen server using some uh, 
system method system module methods that uh, Erlang provides. So uh, we'll use them, uh, and it's pretty easy. So we can quickly show that. Okay, I can quickly show that. Okay. Uh, so Erlang has this method called uh, on uh, trace on the sys module. Okay, and where you need to pass in the uh, uh, process PID and the true to turn on tracing on that just server okay so we already have the gen server pid in bid okay and we are just turning on tracing for this gen server okay and that's it okay now let's try to do something with the server okay so we have hello in it we'll just push another thing called world okay so we'll just execute this and now since tracing is on you can see it's printing very useful things over here so it said when we are pushing, we know that we are casting, we are calling uh, handle cast. So it's printed that it printed a debug message. Okay, this is the gen server uh, PID. Okay, and it's saying that the gen server got a cast message and the message look uh, and the current state is, uh, sorry, the message looks like push world, right? Uh, that's what the gen server receives on a cast, right? It receives push comma uh, the element that you're pushing. So it's printed uh, what it got, okay. And then it said that uh, now after the cast is complete, the new updated state of the gen server is, uh, previously we started the gen server using hello and we pushed world. So the updated state is world comma hello. Okay, so you see uh, this is very uh, useful. It's printed the message that the gen server received and also the updated state, right? Okay, so now we have pushed a message, let's pop something, okay. So we are calling uh, pop and passing it the gen server PID. Okay, when we are calling pop, we expect back, uh, uh, like we did a handle call in pop, right? So uh, when we are doing pop, we are doing gen server call. So the handle call block will execute, right? This one, okay. And you see that the debug message is printed. It says that the gen server process got a call. Okay, and what was the message? It, the message was pop. It got the, it got this message from who? It got this message from the IEX process. This is the PID of the IEX process. If I do self, you see it's, 110, so this is the uh, PID of the IEX process. And then uh, since it's a handle call, it will send a reply back to our uh, caller process, the IEX process, right? So the gen server PID send a reply that is world, that is the thing that it popped from the stack to the caller process. The caller process is the uh, um, IEX process. And the new state after popping the value world is hello. Okay, so it gave us a very good log and this is very useful for debugging as you can imagine. Okay. Okay. Uh, okay. So we have seen uh, push and pop. Okay. Now let's discuss what this handle continue does. Okay. So we have seen handle call, handle cast. We have seen handle, uh, sorry, handle continue. We have already seen handle continue, handle call, handle cast in it. We have seen. Okay. So let's see what is handle info. Okay. So, uh, uh, any message that you send to a gen server directly. So, uh, you know, uh, Elixir has this send method, right? The send method is directly defined on the kernel module that Elixir has. So, uh, kernel.send, okay. And what you do is you give the PID of the process and any message, any arbitrary message that you want to send. So say, I'll just say a message, okay. And what this does is it sends uh, this message to the this PID. And th in this case, this is our gen server PID. Okay. So if you are sending messages to the gen server using something like this, okay, then uh, those things will be handled by the handle info callback. Okay. So over here, I'm doing nothing uh, but just printing the message it received. Okay. And then I am just uh, returning no reply and state. Uh, so you can, uh, in response to receiving handle info, you can update the state or do something. But over here, I'm not doing any changes in the state and just uh, uh, returning the original state. Okay. So if I do this, you see, uh, first the tracing message is printed that, uh, the gen server got a message like this. Okay. Then this IO dot puts that I did over here. Okay. Uh, that is printed over here, received a message, something. Okay. And then, uh, the new state is, uh, I have not changed the new state. So new state remains same. Hello. Okay. So this is what handle info does. Okay. Uh, there's nothing more to it. Okay. Um, okay. Now, uh, these were uh, some of the like the most um, common callbacks uh, that gen server have. So before moving forward, I just would like to say, uh, should I continue or uh, the rest of the thing I can show later? I think uh, Abhishek also has something for today. Hi, Abhishek. Mm -hmm. yeah, hi, hi, everyone. 
So, uh, like I have a couple of two small things to show. So, depending on how long your thing could go open, we can decide on that. How much time okay. will you take? Uh, yeah, I think uh, the things that I have uh, with, uh, I had some things with trapping exits and how the uh, terminate callback uh, uh, terminate, uh, right? how it works. Yeah. yeah so yeah. Uh, those things might take time. So I think yeah, we yeah. won't have time for so, your uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I think I'll, I'll uh, quickly run over my stuff and then yeah. we can uh, move on to terminate because terminate is a sort of separate topic in itself. Mm -hmm. Right. Okay. Yeah, I think uh, maybe you can share. I can. So ask. Yeah, I'm trying to share. Yeah, my screen. So, so. Uh, Sandesh sir, uh, uh, can you, are... you make him host, uh, Arpan? Yeah, yeah, I did. Okay. Just one second. I'll... Okay. So I think I can share my screen. Is it visible? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So can you just I, increase I, the font size a little bit? Sure, sure. Is it is it better? Yeah, better. Okay. So uh, what I'm trying to do is uh, there is uh, this book uh, Elixir in Action by Stasa Zurich, and so. Uh, he has a lot of code on how gen server is, you know, uh, can be used. So there is a lot of sample code. So I'm trying to run over some of his code from chapter seven and maybe something from chapter six, if the time permits. So that will help us uh, ingrain more concepts that uh, Arpan just discussed. So what we, what I'll do is I'll quickly walk through what is in there. So he has discussed like various implementations of a to-do list. So like Arpan discussed earlier that if, when not to use a gen server. So basically if you're trying to model our domain and you know, we could use modules and everything, but if you are to man manage a state, then we should probably use a gen server. So gen server is never used for module organization. So the logic and how, what should be updated. So. This is a to-do list, which is simple. It has a lot of entries where every entry has a structure. So this is the structure that, you know, entry has, it's a, it has a name and a date, but that's all it has. So then, uh, just give me one. Hello? Am I audible? Yeah, good. Yeah. Okay. So these are all the uh, small, small utilities that are there for manipulating my list. So I want to create a new list. I want to get the size. I want to add an entry, uh, you know, get entries by date, so on and so forth, update the entries. So this is the module. This is how we organize our code in Elixir and we never use gen server for this. I could implement it. I mean, by this way that, you know, you pass a message, add entry, and then something happens to the list. But uh, just to highlight, just to revise the fact. So how would I use a gen server? This is the gen server implementation. So these four are client side callbacks. So like Arpan discussed that we always wrap these client side callbacks in a wrapper function. So whenever gen server dot start, there's a start method. So I'll write to do dot server dot start. Does that make sense so far? Yeah. 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 Okay. So on my client side, there is an add entry and it is a cast because it's a hand it's implemented with a handle cast. 
and then since i want to wait when i you know say that uh, give me all the entries that i have so i want to wait for it so it has to be a synchronous call and there is one special case of concurrent entries uh, so we will discuss that um, when i initialize i just create a new list and this is a method that i have defined in list which is this does this make sense so far yeah yeah okay so i have one handle cast and two handle calls okay so this is pretty simple like i i receive a list and i receive entries with the date and i enter that date in this function so this function wraps around all the complexities of map dot put so if we just quickly go there and we see something like enum map every entry to entry and so on so forth so basically this so a lot of uh, module code organization is abstracted away so one of the problems in this uh, what this tries to solve is that uh, one our code is organized somewhere else our state is managed somewhere else which is in the gen server so this is very basic functioning to do list now if i want to uh, you know uh, this is just one gen server for one list right so let's say i want to have 10 gen servers which are managing 10 lists you know so all of them would use the same interface like this because uh, all the functions are same so my code organization would be same so let's quickly go to this cache code and let's try to run that through so you see this list is same It, it's the same module written same so this is our code organization and this is just one same server that we have seen before it has an add entry and entries an add entry is a cast entries is a call so this is the same thing that we have seen so far now there is this cache cache is nothing but a key value store so what this does is that it uh, creates a gen server so it creates this server and records the pid as a key value store does does that make sense so initially the state is empty as the process is launched the state becomes server and with that name we get a pid pid i mean this is the map of all the pids this is the name of the our to do list and this is the pid because when we do to do server dot start we start a new gen server right does this make sense okay so if i give a list uh, file list uh, how many gen servers was we start uh, so if we call cache dot start with oh. a uh, so the number of times we so i mean let's just quickly try and run it okay does that make yeah, sense the answer is five five gen servers are started yeah so now let's do oh sorry uh oh i should have stored the pid though so i have pid and now i'll send this i'll call server process to do cache dot server process with my pid and new list so this is this has started a new server with new list so if i try to start it again it is the same gen server i mean so cache returns the same pid because that is stored in the you know this gen server state the cache gen server state does that make sense 
like we have one gen gen server which manages all the gen servers sort of mm -hmm. makes sense so this is our cache uh, pcb so this is one way to implement you know uh, i wanted to show this load test also which is nice uh, but i think we will we'll keep it for some other day i want to quickly show one pooling stuff that we have done before so it's very fresh in our memory so i want to show that so basically the problem is the same like we discussed in you know uh, last thing that if i want if i can if i go on i can spawn like 10000 processes and then system would go haywire so i can do the pooling stuff here i could use pool boy but um, uh shasha has done some fancy thing here so this code is same we have just seen this you know this cache is same there is database and there is database worker so basically what he does is that uh he does this erlang.phash which is nothing but uh whatever value you give it will map it somewhere between 0 and 2 so we will always have three answers from this worker key so that's how you crudely implement your pool boy for demonstration purposes but again if you use pool boy it will come down to the same thing so just to quickly run from top to bottom this is gen server which is a database so basically he's trying to write this into a file binary so here he is choosing a worker which is sort of not doing the work similarly so when he is trying to write to the database he doesn't want you know a 10000 servers all trying to write to the disk at the same time so that becomes a limiting operation so he is choosing which one is empty and so on so forth so at any given moment he has uh, you know worker key is either 0 or 1 or 2 that's all because this p hash maps any key which is our uh, the string to one of these values so then he gets the workers according to you know 0 1 2 and then he returns it so basically this manages our pool and this database worker actually writes to the file you know so this database manages a pool for database workers does that make sense uh, ah yeah. Uh, yeah i think one thing here might be that uh, uh, this pool that we are saying uh, the way he is choosing the pool he is uh, uh -huh. like choosing one of the three uh, workers that we yeah, yeah. started yeah. but yeah. Uh, we are not yeah we are not checking here if the worker is busy or uh, give me a free worker maybe what pool no, boy no, does no those those things are not yeah those things are not there yeah so this this just limits it to 3 that's all it does i mean you can't go beyond 3 but there right. is no no fancy things like pool boy so what does erlang.phash function do actually can you just copy that only that yeah 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 and I'll quickly show protocol. this uh so let's say i have a string you know so okay. it will map this to so one string will be mapped so it will map values to 0 1 okay what if erlang dot ph2 uh, and uh, some another key yeah yeah i'll i'll come to that so it will always for any given key it will give me always one value so but if i give some key one it will give me something else but that will always be constant for a given p given key okay so, so we just... how is this useful is that if i want to uh, you know if i want to go 9 so it will give me some according to this range it will give me for this key some value between 0 to 9 so so this is saying that you know use worker number 2 for this uh, method so that there is sort of consistent hashing sort of thing
Is everyone here? Shall I start? Yeah. Okay. Okay. So, we were on this. So, this makes sense? No. No. Yes. Yeah. Okay, so so we have seen that uh, uh, like list is our code organization, then we have a server, then our cache which manages our servers. Does that make sense? This cache is yeah. nothing but key value store of all the servers that are there, and every server is a to do list, mm -hmm. right? So similarly, whenever we create a server we try to write it to disk, which is what database does, which is what database worker does. Now we want to be able to uh, write to disk concurrently for all these servers that our cache is maintaining. So for that, we have implemented this database, which manages the database workers three at a time using this which is, I mean, could have used pool boy and other fancy things, but yeah. So th this makes sense to everybody. I mean, high level idea, how things are going on, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, after that, I think it's, it's, uh, supervision tree and all that. So you're not going there. Uh, if you've understood that, I think before this, so there is very simple stuff, just a key value store map dot port map dot get. So this is the has been adequately explained. I mean, I just wanted to highlight these things because this code is available. Just, you know, having a brief idea and then run over and try it yourself. That sort of thing. Maybe, maybe you can show that stress test or something. Oh yeah, load test. Right? Load, load uh, test, yes. So load test is uh, where is load test? It's in cache. Load, load test. So it's in chapter seven. Okay. It's not here. Okay, I should also start probably observer. So, but then just what does this flag do? Like hyphen, hyphen, all, and then plus p and time. Uh, I don't know much, but this is some, this has something to do with okay. like the default value of the Erlang. Okay. Because he's running a lot of I mean, mm -hmm. processes at the same time. So, probably 2 million. Okay. I think yeah, this, this is 2 million. Okay. That's my guess. I haven't had a look. Yeah, got it, got it. So, meanwhile, this runs. Let's try to read what's written. Okay. So he's trying to test one million gen servers, right? And with like one lakh at point one million at a time. So trying to test it ten times, you know, overall. So. Uh, then he says run, he starts a gen server and then he's trying to time out time, like timing of this cache server process. So if I quickly, I cannot control and follow. Okay. So, uh, I'll open this and we'll try to see what this does. Cache dot server process. This is the function which calls our server process with a to do list name in a handle call. And what this does is that it starts our server. If it's a new server, otherwise it replies with an old server. Does that make sense? 
Yes. Uh, or, or shall I, you know, quickly go again? Okay. So what this does is that if my server process exists, it just returns the PID. Otherwise, it starts it. That's all it is. So he's trying to time that, you know, uh, how many processes he has started and what is the average put and average get. So this is what we have seen that uh, the put time is a lot, like 43 microseconds and all that because one is cast and one one is called so this waits and it doesn't wait so it doesn't wait so it, it you know the, the process is free and it gets the answers this is one of my understandings but i i still have to read it a lot like better and sasa says that this is like at best inconclusive and <laughs> you can you know quickly understand ki kya chal raha hai, but no deductions to be made from this so Mm -hmm. so, I think get yeah, is, I mean, this is call and put is cast. Sorry? Uh, get is call and put is cast, right? Uh, I, I don't think so. Yeah, I think otherwise. Let's see. Yeah, even I think so. He says this is put and this is get, right? And... Yeah, because get is supposed to be called. Yeah, I mean, that's what server process. Hmm. I don't know, I don't understand that it, it did this morning and now I'm going to just, nice. Uh, <laughs> sorry. Yeah, I, uh, I mean, can you show the server I mean, process is... one? If you can show that server process once. This one? Yeah. yeah, it's here. It's here. This this is the server process. Mm -hmm. So it's called uh, oh no, so, so the server process for the to do, not cache. Yeah, the yeah, to do dot cache, right? Oh, okay, okay. My bad. Yeah. Uh, okay, Arpit Bhai, do you think he has used call for both? For both, yeah, yeah, uh, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, so, so I, I think I said. think the thing okay. is okay, okay. Oh, so so what what's happening is that first this code runs, then this code runs, right? Mm -hmm. So what happens is this is running for the first time, right? So I call the server process with the PID and a string, which is server name, right? This is my server name, right? This is my uh, to-do list name, right? right? And this is my PID. So I'll open them probably side by side. So what happens is, uh, for the first time, you know, when we are timing here, all these processes are getting created for the first time. And when I'm running this again, they are already created. So I simply, uh, I simply, you know, do I don't start this process. I simply reply with the existing process because I do map dot fetch. I don't do to do, to do server dot start like here. Does this make sense? Mm -hmm. So that's why my you know get is fast and put is slow because I'm starting a new gen server here, but I'm not starting it here. I'm just doing map dot fetch. So that's the difference. Okay. Got it. Got it. Yes. Uh, foolish question, so, but are they on yeah. different servers or same? Uh, I'm a bit confused. Was this IO dot put is on? Sorry. Uh, the the both both messages are coming from different server or same? No, this okay. is just a script. This is not a server. Okay, okay. Good. This is just a script. This is module. Okay, okay. Good. This is Mind module. Is. This is not a process. Okay. Yeah. Okay. No issues. No issues. I mean, just we're all trying to understand, so no issues. Mm -hmm. Yeah, my, my rule of thumb is like always use call unless you 
absolutely need something like you know fire and forget because so, because because otherwise you know uh, it can easily overflow the mailbox so the for that okay. for that but then with call you are blocking stuff right yes with call you are blocking stuff right yes uh, now now the case is that when you want to use call i mean you want to get the value because by with cast you don't get the value right right cast doesn't return anything correct so what if you need a value but mm-hmm. you don't want to block the gen server what do you do then so if i need a value and don't oh i i just you don't want to block no but you don't want to block the gen server right yeah. oh uh, i think gen server i don't know uh, i think gen server uh, is good for catering just one message i think it is built in a way to cater just one message at a time yeah i mean it is it is so i mean, I mean if the... there is a if there is a need that get a value but do not block then i think it is a wrong case is what i learned recently yeah probably uh, so there are two scenarios that this uh, this the, the, i mean this is handled in two ways one way is to uh, you say that process dot send after so let's say you are calling an api and that api will wait so you will send another process another message to the gen server when the api call finishes so you say process dot send after to self this message and whenever you get that value you know whatever you are trying to do so but then uh, so this executes like uh, instantly like this after one second you submit this message here mm-hmm. so uh, okay I'll, i'll show you a better code i mean that i have it's and second way is gen server dot reply so you can do either of these two things from a spawn so if i spawn a new function here and then do gen server dot reply from there so my handle call is not blocked i'll show you uh but like uh sandesh said it's not a good practice to do this it's you know then probably you know you're misusing it somehow but then uh if if you need then you can do it so ideally in handle call you'll have a message and the caller so my point was i mean why i showed you this because i was trying to understand when would i use a caller caller is my parent process parent process had some pid and this is that pid but i never used it in handle call right mm-hmm. so right. this is a case where i spawn a new spawn a new process it does something you know and then from this process i do gen server dot reply use that uh, value and return that data so this spawns of immediately and my handle call is not blocked but i get that data at a some point in time later so but then again uh, you sh- question question what? like ha oh, sorry ha bolo bolo i no still still trying to you know get my head, head around this like what does reply do exactly it just returns some message Are, to just this the understand this is send Oh, okay. Yeah, the send the send is a send. What oh, does okay. send do? Oh, it just send the message send to the given PID. Bus, 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 bus. That's bus all. Bus this time. Ajay, ajay. Okay. So, then several dot reply is you reply from to a kind. That's all it does. Um, so, uh, just one question here. Hmm. this uh, this uh, call should not block and you showed that that it will come back after some time right can we go to that that code which code uh, you you showed some code right that the call send will after. not block and then uh, process dot send after ha send, send after, after. this ha uh-huh. uh-huh. so one? how do yeah yeah this one how That's do right. we know this time out right i mean this time 1000 is a time right that uh uh-huh. yeah, yeah 
so uh, how how do we arrive at that time is it some guess work or how is that is there no, is no, is no telling right because it 1000 is just an example it's just an example like you could you know do all the fancy stuff to get this 1000 like have some very good logic or whatever okay uh, so my point is you... this 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 time right i mean uh Haan, atul guess, uh, what... guess the time itself is the, is the... yeah shall i yeah yeah go ahead uh imagine that uh, you want to give the value by some computing or making some api call and uh, get the value and then uh, you return here so assume that if uh, api call is going to need 2 seconds to get back the value so in that case uh, to not block he is just uh, uh, saying send after so uh, handle call is going to uh, that handle call is going to reply the state as it is and after the uh, this uh, process dot send after yeah. at time it will send a message and which will be caught in handle info yeah i i got it i got it sandesh i understand the concept my point is that that time out value that 1000 or whatever you come up with right 2 second or 3 second that is uh, something that we can't uh, very accurately guess right so uh, so let's let's try to understand the same concept with this yeah. example this is live beats code which is like in production made by fly.io which is like the company so behind this elixir stuff written by chris mccord so let's try to understand this very simple gen server which uses this process dot send after does that make sense yeah 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 sure sure yeah so let's let's try to go through this code this is like very small stuff okay okay so uh-huh. this is a simple gen server and he says that whole interval is 30 minutes does this make sense this is just a variable he has defined so he starts a gen server here okay. and this is the only client sort of side things that there is because he how he is using this is that after a polling interval he clears the disk he says that i don't want to store any of the data i am just deleting everything right so this gen server should run on its own it doesn't need to get any messages from anywhere it doesn't need to do anything you know with interact with any other process this server this gen server should you know after every 30 minutes it's like a cron job simple Right? Yeah, yeah. After okay. every thirty minutes, it it sits quietly, waits for thirty minutes, and then you know cleans everything up. So this has started. Now there is uh, whatever the options I have, I just pick up the whatever the interval that was given, and I schedule my cleanup. Okay. 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 So the schedule cleanup does that. Process dot send after what this does is that it will send this message. remove songs so this pid after this milliseconds cool okay okay so basically i am automatically sending remove songs messages to my gen server after poll interval because the default value is poll interval so after every 30 minutes i am sending remove songs and this is handled in handle info because this is coming from a process yeah, yeah. it's not coming from you know no 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 client side interface is there to call this remove right. songs yeah. so because it is sent by you know process dot send after so it gets the remove song message and then you know it expires the song which are older than 30 minutes and then it recalls this function schedule state schedule cleanup which is then again waiting for 30 minutes cool okay Uh, so basically what the, this does is that yes one of the examples where i have Sorry? used uh, i have used this over at one of the examples so we had sensors uh, data is uh-huh. coming from sensor uh, and uh, if we do, do not hear back from sensor for more than 60 minutes uh, we mark it as uh, inactive sensor if we get a message it is active so th- that place we used that uh, send after 
So mm. uh, after uh, that 60 yes. minutes, we removed it. Remove the message. Mm. So, yeah. So, so Sandesh, if my understanding is correct, this statement will not block anything. It will just pass it here and then it will wait on line 28, right? Uh, Handle info will it never wait? be blocked. No, it will. Uh, what or will it be? It will hold, right? It will just hold. Oh, so this is this is pull, but like line number twenty three, it will take some time, right? Like let's say one minute or yeah, two. Yeah, minute. yeah, yeah. Right. So for that time, uh, it's going to take that time, like regardless of what. Yeah, I, I mean, let's say twenty line twenty three takes. And two since minutes. it's, it's no replies, take... yeah, yeah. So since it's no reply, it's not blocking one. Uh, but yeah. there is there is another use case, like which is very handy. Uh. So here we are like waiting for 30 minutes right yeah now just in some hypothetical situation well it's not very hypothetical in in, in very realistic situation sometimes <laughs> it happens that uh -huh. uh, your operation may, may take more than 30 minutes now obviously not here but like let's say your timer is five minutes and you are making some call to some third party api and that api yeah, is yeah. taking more than yeah, five yeah. minutes or like some yeah, yeah. generally it happens with some database operations or something mm -hmm. like data mm -hmm. kind of things. Mm -hmm. and and you, and you don't want to, you know, uh, you, you want to run it like a cron job, but you don't want mm -hmm. to run it at specific interval. You want to run it only after the first thing is finishing. So if it if it is if it is finishing after let's say five seconds, then run it after five seconds. Uh, let's say there is some minimum threshold. Like let's say run it only after a minute. But let's say if, if it is taking let's say 30, 36 second, 36 minutes in the first run. Then run it only after 36 minutes. Like don't cancel five five minutes run in between, like seven, five minutes run in between. So that's that's where it's very useful. Like mm -hmm. this process and uh, that's a nice use case. That's a nice use case. So uh, I think that that's all I had to show. Uh, if if anybody has questions, we can take them up. And then Arpan can then server dot terminate, probably. Yeah. Um. By Arpan, by any chance, do you have uh, that uh, callback of uh, format state or something? By any chance? Uh, yeah, I have seen it, but uh, I haven't yeah. included it in the code because okay, it's yeah. uh, pretty less used and yeah, I can talk about uh, it if you want. Yeah, no, I was just assuming that what you shown us in the console, the message is printed. I think we can change the, can we change the format using handle uh, like format set? I am just assuming. Yeah. I don't know. Okay. Yeah, yeah, you are absolutely correct. So, yeah, basically, uh, that uh, the tracer module it prints the state of the gen server, and the way it's printing the state, as you see, uh, it's printing dbg debug, and then uh, receive this message from so and so PID, and uh, the updated state is this, and all. So you can format that message, and you can make it such that it prints something or uh, something you have defined. So for that, there's a format callback that the gen server behavior offers. So you can just include that in your gen server and uh, define your own format. So the state will be printed in that format, uh, which you have defined. So yeah, correct. Cool. There's also, uh, the, there's a couple of uh, callbacks in gen servers, which are like not very widely used. Uh, this format state is one of them. There's also um, something, uh, what is that? Uh, code uh, this thing code reload. change which is used for hot code reloading so that's also something uh, there with yeah we don't use it often mostly we uh, we only do handle cast call and uh, sometimes this continue and terminate and all these things yeah okay uh, like how do we name the james Um, so when naming the gen servers, I think there are a couple of ways, like you can either use a atom or uh, usually what 
I do in my real life projects is I keep it simple. I just use the module name as the gen server name. But if you are launching more than one gen servers, then you can't use the model name because it has to be unique. So right. in that case, uh, there are, uh, yeah, you can use something like uh, the Elixir has a registry module, uh, which you can use, uh, which can be used to store some, uh, it is a process registry. So it can be, uh, it is often used to store this uh, gen server names and all. So you can use that uh, or you can come up with your own names uh, and make sure, but the only thing is you have to make sure that they are uh, unique and uh, later you should be able to, uh, like if you want to call us, pass a message to a specific gen server, then uh, uh, you have to, uh, find the name of the gen server. So you have to have that logic uh, somehow that uh, I want to call the gen server with this name. So, yeah. So either use registry or use uh, the module name or a simple atom. Uh, yeah, those are the mostly the ways. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I was just trying H handle gen server dot handle uh, do they have helper methods here? Uh, documentation for gen dot handle call uh, okay you're saying uh, you're talking about handle call is it uh, yes i was trying to see the documentation Somehow it is not allowing. Mm -hmm. uh, let me share quickly the screen. If someone oh, yes, has because it's a behavior and no, okay, no, it's so... a behavior. So those documents are not compiled with Elixir. Like, yeah. oh, so okay. just search for gen server and you will find the whole document because you know, this is a behavior and that document behaviors document is, is not compiled. Okay. Yeah. There you go. Okay. I was trying to see the code change actually. So I will do it some other time. Just, just open it in browser. Never. Uh, I mean, I did. Uh, I think yeah, that. Yes. That health, uh, that uh, help text said that you could use the instead of using H, you can use B to see the behavior uh, callbacks. So maybe try B handle call. Or B or code change, whatever you want to see. Oh, this is interesting. I did not know. Yeah. You're genius, man. Oh, I, I also didn't know it. It said in the help text uh, when you tried with H. Yeah. Oh, okay. yeah this, this, I, is nice. this is nice. Nice. I learned something new. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's beautiful. So I can even do P and. Oh, wow. Cool, cool, great. Yeah, anyone wants to become host? Or shall I stop recording? Terminate, terminate. We didn't.